this video, I'm going to talk about syntax errors and expressions. So this is the program we saw from last time. Uh, you saw that when I run this program, I'm going to run it by clicking here. It prints out the number five, hello world, and then the number nine. Uh, then let's look at the number nine. You see, the number nine is the result of this mathematical expression, seven plus two is nine so uh, you see i just added a space there if i run this again it'll run just fine so and i can add a bunch of spaces there and it runs just fine however if i say i put in the letter u in there um and i try to run it it's going to tell me that errors exist etc so it doesn't like that I'm going to cancel that. Uh, and you can see right here, there's a little red line telling me that's a syntax error. Uh, so that is the first thing that you learn about writing programs, is that the compiler it is uh, very strict when it comes to what the program looks like. Uh, I'm going to save that again, gets rid of that uh, red line. So, for example, if I put in, you know, my name up here, it doesn't like that either. Right? So you cannot put English. You can't just write anything anywhere. Everything that you write on the .java file has to be a, a Java program, has to conform to the Java language. So when I'm writing English, English is a whole different language, so it's not Java. It doesn't understand it. Uh, however, what you can do and what we do when we want to write little comments like that is we can write slash slash and after that, after the slash slash, then I can write whatever I want in that line. This is a comment and that's fine. And the program runs just fine. It's not a problem. The little lines here are telling me that, uh, uh, you know, that's not an English world, it's trying to spell it. So Eclipse has a spell checker there. Uh, I can uh, add that, oops. Uh, I can ignore that and I'll just add that word to the dictionary. You might wanna do that with your name also. Uh, so it stops doing that. Um, so other examples. Um, if I am, um, I wrote this other this line here. Let's say I would I was writing seven plus two, and I forgot that semicolon there at the end. Uh, right away, I get a little red mark saying no. If you hover over that, it says syntax error. Insert semicolon to complete statement. Um, so it's actually telling me how to fix it. Uh, so you see that's wrong. Uh, you see this little curly bracket. Let's say you forgot about that. It's like oh. You know, you were typing too fast, you forgot to add those in. Again, you're going to get red lines. Uh, and then it's going to tell you syntax error, token. And you see, it's telling me that uh, uh, curly bracket expected after this token. So it's telling me that curly bracket is expected there. I add that in, I still get another error. I go over there, and what does it say? A syntax error, insert uh, closing curly bracket to complete the class body so I can do that insert that and get it back to shape um, so the point is that you have to be very very careful um, about the syntax so unlike English where you know if I write something that is not grammatical or if I write something uh, that you know it's misspelled like that most people can read that and say oh he just misspell that as a comment. The computer is not smart. The computer cannot do that. It cannot fix your program. So uh, if you write something, if you, instead of writing println, you write, uh, instead of the L, you put in a one there. Uh, kind of looks like println, but it's not. And the computer will tell you. No, that is uh, method print y, print one n is undefined. So it can now, um, and actually Eclipse gives you some fixes. So if you click here, it says change to print len. 
click there and it will fix it. Uh, sometimes it'll fix us, other times it cannot. Uh, in any case, as long as there is an error, uh, you will not be able to run the program. Um, so that's something to always be careful with. Uh, you will learn you over time. You will learn all the the details about the Java grammar and the Java syntax. The main thing to remember for now is that every statement must end in a semicolon. You see, every line ends with a semicolon. And then for every open bracket, I have to have a matching closing bracket. I have, and here, even an open parenthesis is matched by a closed parenthesis. An open parenthesis is matched by a closed parenthesis over here. Uh, that has to always be the case. Um, OK. And uh, within here, I have an expression, which is 7 plus 2, which comes out to 9. Uh, I can also you know, subtract. So if I wanted to say 7 plus 2 minus 3, I can run that. And it'll give me the right answer, which is 6. Uh, I can do. Um, if I want to say I wanted to multiply 7 times 5, I use the star. So I say 7 times 5, the star, which is just over the 8 on your keyboard, or so it's shift 8 to type in. Uh, the star is the multiplication in programming languages. Um, so I can run that. And it'll give me 35. And to divide, you use that, the slash, uh, like that. So I can divide, let's say, if I wanted to divide 20 divided by 4, I can run that, and it'll give me 5. That's correct. Uh, I can mix and match these also. I can say 20 times 5 plus 13. You can run that and say that's 113, right? 20 times 5 is 100, plus 13 is 113. I can also divide 13, or say 12 divided by 4. I can run that, and that'll give me 103. So it's 20 times 5, 100, plus, and then 12 divided by 4 is uh, 3, so it's 103. And uh, so it, when you start writing these kind of expressions, it can be a little hard to see what order. I mean, um, it follows the same order you follow in math. Uh, that is, multiplication gets done. Multiplication and division go first. Then sub addition and subtraction get done. So in this case, we multiply these two. And we divide 12 divided by 4. And then we add them. Uh, but generally, you know, it's a bad idea or bad practice to do that for most cases. So what you can do to make it really clear is to put parentheses around them. So now this is saying, okay, first do this 20 times 5, and then do this 12 divided by 4, and then the results of those get added together. We can run that. You see the result is still the same uh, because I haven't changed it. So you have um, the operators that you have are addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, and division. Uh, there's also a very useful one, uh, the modulo operator. And um, so for this here, uh, which is a percent, this is the module, modulus. Uh, or in math, sometimes you write mod. Uh, if you're taking that class, you say x mod 5. So, and it's also known as the remainder operator. So, it's what remains after you divide by the number. So, for example, if I say 12 mod 10, modulo 10, I run that, uh, and that'll be 2. So, uh, the remainder of 12, you divide 12 divided by 10, that's 1 with a remainder of 2. Uh, 11 will be 1. Uh, 10 modulo 10 is 0. And 9 modulo 10 is 9, etc. So 9 uh, is 
9, 8 is 8, all the way down to 1. Um, and then say 22, it'll be 2. Right. Okay. 